Hello folks, this is Alex Walger with WideOpenCamera.com. Today I'm going to share with you how to use Canon DSLR footage with Avid Media Composer 6 or Avid Symphony 6. The workflow is actually uh, pretty much exactly the same. First of all, a little disclaimer, this is a workflow developed from my personal experience. Please take from it what you will, adapt it to suit your needs. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, post them in the comments below. I'll try and get back to you. All right, so here we are in Avid Symphony. First of all, before we get started, a little run through on how I like to organize everything. Uh, we've got a folder for our online files and our online sequences, and then offline files and sequences. Let's get to mastering later, but to start off, all we do is you go to uh, link to AMA volume. Uh, yeah, this is the footage I want. This is all H.264 footage from a Canon 7D that was shot uh, using the great cinema picture profile. This is our AMA linked footage. You can tell it's AMA links because of the little chain link on each of the clips. Let's go ahead and put that into our online folder. And then open up the DNX36 bin. This is where we are actually going to split off on our workflow. Uh, for some of you folks out there, you can actually go ahead and start editing this AMA linked footage. But since I am on a 2.4 Core 2 Duo laptop from 2008, uh, I don't exactly have the power to edit as smoothly as I'd like for a more complex timeline. So I'm going to opt to transcode these to an offline format and then re-link them later. So, let's just grab a couple of these clips. Hold on, option grab. So, here are our clips. Uh, to uh, transcode these to the lower quality format, you can select both of them by uh, shift clicking them and then right click, consolidate, transcode. You select transcode and then select a media drive other than the current one you are working on for your offline files and I'm going to select DNX HD 36 uh, so I can do that and transcode and I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording while this works all right, now that the media has finished transcoding, we can go ahead and move forward. So you're gonna have to quit the symphony. Then uh, you're gonna have to eject the hard drive that contains the original AMA linked material, which happens to be media drive four. So let's go ahead and eject that one and then relaunch Avid Symphony. We open the project you were working on. All right, and now you'll see that the AMA linked clips uh, that you had brought in before are all offline. So you can go ahead and close that bin. Uh, thankfully we created those offline files so all you need to do is shift select the MA link clips right click select relink and then select the drive that we used to transcode to earlier and uh, select specific resolution use DNX 36 and then hit OK and it should locate and relink the files for you all right, and now the AMA linked files have been relinked to the low, lower quality uh, DNX 36 files. So let's go ahead and put some ins and outs and make a quick edit.
All right, let's go ahead and move the sequence that we just created to our offline sequences bin. Go ahead and close this. Open up the online sequences bin. And let's say that this is our finished edit and we're gonna go ahead and relink it back to the original AMA link files for the next step in the process. So let's option click and drag this sequence over to online sequences. And then we're gonna go over back to our finder and eject the drive that contains the offline files this time. So the lower quality files have all gone offline. Let's uh, close the offline sequences bin. And then let's remount the hard drive that contains the original files. And this offline copy of the sequence, in order to relink it back to the original AMA files, all you need to do is hit File, Link to AMA Volume, and, and then open the folder that contained the original H.264 material. And now that you've reloaded the AMA volume containing the original files, you can see that the sequence has been relinked to the AMA files. It's uh, pretty much as simple as that. And uh, for finishing, uh, I like to finish at 175. So let's go ahead and make a copy of this offline sorry now this online sequence to our master sequence bin option drag let's go ahead and close this and close that all right and then let's right click on this new sequence sorry let's rename this for a final cut and let's consolidate transcode this. All right, and then let's transcode this to DNX HD 175. Okay, so now that the files have finished transcoding, you can go ahead and go to the transcoded version of the of the uh, timeline. Now, normally you wouldn't want to edit with these dot new versions of the clips just because you can't relink those back to the AMA clips uh, but since this is our last step this is our finishing step we don't really have to worry about that plus we've got um, duplicates of all of our all of our older sequences uh, and at this point if you were going to color grades so if you shot with cine style instead of a baked in picture profile like the cinema picture picture profile that we used here uh, then you'd uh, go into color correction mode and I have the H key on my Avid keyboard set up as a hot key to take you into color correction mode. Uh, and basically I just go through and uh, make a few corrections at this point. Uh, but uh, I don't really need to grade this since it was done with a baked in picture look. Uh, so let's go ahead and send this to uh, encoding and it's as simple as hitting send to encoding and so on some squeeze let's name it final cut export you have to hit auto launch and then select the squeeze app um, auto load the exported file this should uh, all be correct as it is and then hit OK. It'll quickly render in any effects that you had, if you had done any. Uh, and then auto launch Sorens and Squeeze. OK, now that it's in the encoding application, uh, I found that for Vimeo or YouTube delivery, H.264 footage from a Canon DSLR looks the best when encoded using Sorensen's, um YouTube X264 codec you see here. So all you have to do is just drag that down here. It automatically adds this deinterlace. I don't know why it does that, but you can just uh, 
delete that from the job. And uh, for YouTube or Vimeo, I generally like to set the encode settings to two pass constant bit rate at 10,000 kilobits per second. Preset slower. Uh, slower means that it, it takes a bit longer and does a little bit better job doing it. Um, and the preset, I like to use film. And for audio, make sure it's 48 kilohertz. Hit OK. Select the destination for your file. Select the destination for your file. And then hit squeeze it. And that's it. Uh, the new uh, squeeze 8.5 that I'm using here uh, has doubled the speed that it works at. It's a very good encoding program and the X264 uh, presets don't have any gamma shift issues. So in, in my opinion, they do uh, they provide the best quality uh, at really small file sizes for Vimeo or YouTube. And that about does it for the Avid DSLR workflow. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment. Um, remember, you can choose to either edit via AMA if you have a system that can handle it, or you can do the offline uh, workflow that I've suggested here. Uh, both work perfectly. In the end, it's up to you to find the one that works the best for you. Uh, I'll leave you with a little bit of this Boxster footage. Thank you for watching.